I've played a lot of roguelites, roguelikes, and dungeon crawlers in the last couple years. And I mean, that's not really surprising, these games are releasing all the time, and Procgen is some really strong technology that's just growing and growing and giving way to all these crazy genres and games, and I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious I'm gonna play a couple of them with how many come out, right? The latest of these dang dungeon crawlers that I've been playing is Moonlighter from 11-Bit Studios and Digital Sun Games. Half the game has you doing, you know, doing the usual stuff, rolling around through various procedurally generated dungeons, much like any other dungeon crawler out there. But the other half of the game that takes place outside of the dungeons has you taking ownership of an item shop, selling the bits and bobs you find on your dungeon excursions, and using those funds to expand the town, build onto your shop, and even better your equipment. In an interesting twist, it does something more with the side of roguelites that has you spending the stuff you earn. It makes a whole different game out of it. It gives you more control over how much you actually earn, while also forcing you to experiment with value and strategies that are entirely different from the tactics you use in the dungeons. What's most interesting about Moonlighter to me, though, isn't just that it has this whole shopkeeping aspect, but it's the systemic and pacing side effects that the shopkeeping aspect of the game has on us as players. See, I, I didn't actually realize this until recently, but dungeon crawlers, roguelites, and roguelites tend to have one huge, glaring problem, and that's pacing. So let's, let's take a step back and let's look at what the dungeon crawling genre is built of nowadays, what it's become over time. You sit down, run a dungeon, die, level up a bit or unlock new toys, and then do it all over again. These are games that are designed around having as little downtime as possible because the fun of these is in playing them and experiencing as many close calls and high intensity moments as possible while learning new things about the world. From Binding of Isaac to Dead Cells and even all the way back to the OG Big Mama Rogue itself, these are all built around hard-earned rewards, quick restarts, and keeping you in the action as much as possible. Now, on its own, that's not really a problem. This kind of pacing's become the norm of the genre as a direct result of what players have shown they enjoy within it. We like being neck deep in shit we don't understand, and it's really gratifying to us as we learn how these worlds work and progress further and further against these harsh environments. It's a genre that really just <laughs> kind of evolved into this, in this fast paced high replayability and high stakes high focus engagement throughout each excursion is what's become the standard formula. Over time, as the genre has grown, developers have been creative with some specifics, but that creativity has been more focused on how we engage in the dungeons themselves, changing it from the rogue-style turn-based to real-time, making it a side-scroller, granting upgrades to make further progression possible, and adding all sorts of unique elements to the dungeons themselves to set their own world apart from the plethora of others using the same genre and similar formula. And Honestly, it makes sense. I mean, shit, it's in the name. It's dungeon crawlers. When designing a game, you want to have its core parts be the most interesting and gripping, right? So, duh. But here's the thing about intense gameplay, especially on fast replay cycles like this. When we focus on something intently and that something is itself intense or demanding, it's tiring. That's why we sit back and loosen up and sigh after finishing an intense fight or winning a sweaty multiplayer match. It's not, it's not like a physical exhaustion, but it takes a noticeable amount of energy to be so engaged with so many things for so long. And for me, and I'm sure others, it is tiring. I get worn out after just a few rounds of something so demanding, and it hurts the game's longevity, even if short-term enjoyment and satisfaction are still there in, in fucking spades. There's also the fact that the dungeon crawler genre's focus on its feedback cycle has left most, if not all, meaningful progression in most of its games by the wayside in favor of the moment-to-moment -moment action. With a couple of exceptions, you don't really affect the world around you as a whole, you're kinda just diving into dungeons for the sake of doing it. Sit down, run dungeon, die, get new toys, and repeat ad infinitum with rarely an end in sight. And yeah, I do know that most roguelites have a final boss or area, but just ask yourself why you're doing it, other than to say you did. And then we take a look at Moonlighter. A dungeon crawler that opened my eyes to this pattern for the first time simply by not having it. 
Now here's where I'll get a little more detailed about Moonlighter's two half nature, which is the main reason it doesn't have this issue of exhausting pacing. Remember, it's not just a dungeon crawler, it's also a shopkeeping game. Almost everything you loot in the dungeon has a monetary value to it, and after each excursion, you have time to sell stuff in your shop for money that lets you get upgrades for the shop itself, create new equipment if you have the right materials that are also gathered in the dungeons, and invest in new kinds of shops around your town. You get this time of lower intensity to rest from the crazy high stakes of the dungeon crawls, but it's not its not really downtime, because you're still making permanent and measurable progress towards the end game, and this isn't just some idle activity either. You actually have to pay attention to what's going on in your shop. You have to fine tune prices to make the most out of every little item without displeasing customers. You have to pay attention to supply and demand so that you keep your prices responsive to that. And as your shop grows and more people come in, you have to keep an eye out for ne'er-do-wells that have sticky fingers and eyes on all your goods. Nothing you do in the shop is pointless, and none of it is mindless. But it is a slower, more relaxing pace that lets you catch your breath and really feel the rewards from your dive in the dungeon. Not only does this give you a reprieve, but the things you do feel like they're actually having some kind of an effect on the world, because things actually change outside of the dungeons as your store grows and the town grows and more people show up. I don't want to sit here and say that, oh, all, all dungeon games should have this kind of pacing, yeah! But I do want to say that intense games with the high focus demand should really think about ways to give players some room to breathe without making absolutely zero progress. And I want to say that Moonlighter proves you can solve a pacing problem, or maybe even any kind of problem, without removing or breaking the core of your game's genre or your vision. You just need to be a little clever.